كتاب الله دستوري كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا بسنته جلا نوري لهدي الحق أرشدنا كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا بسنته جلا نوري الله Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome back to the series of ours Touched by the Quran, where every night we were sharing a story from our pious predecessors of how they interacted with the Quran or how they were touched by some verses of the Holy Quran. Tonight, insha'Allah, we will discuss an ayah from Surah Al Mu'minun. Verse number 76. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us in this ayah that we have already seized them with punishment, but they did not turn humble to Allah, nor do they supplicate in humility. The surah, Surah Al Mu'minun, was revealed in Makkah and it has 118 verses and six rukus. Merits and special features of the Surah Al Mu'minun. It is recorded in the Mustad of Ahmad, and he quotes Sayyidina Umar Al Farooq that whenever a wahi, a revelation was being revealed to Rasulullah, then those near him used to hear a sound. And they used to hear a sound like the buzz of bees. And one day, when they heard such a sound they realized that the revelation was descending they all waited hoping to learn about the revelation and when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam returned to his normal state after receiving the wahi he sat down facing the kaaba and he prayed to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the following words rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam prayed to allah and he said, Oh Allah, give us more bounties and do not decrease them for us. Grant us respect and do not put us to humiliation. And give us and do not deprive us. And give us preference over our enemies and do not give preference to our enemies against us. And be pleased with us and make us pleased. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned towards the Sahaba and he said to the Sahaba, Just now, ten verses have been revealed to me and anyone who follows them in letter and spirit will go to Jannah. He then recited the first ten verses of Surah Al-Mu'minun. It might be a good idea for you as you watch this program that after this program, refer to these first 10 ayats of Surah Mu'minun, look at the translations of these ayah and ponder and reflect and put them into practice. Now, you know a lot of times when we are in hardships, that's where our ibadah or our acts of worship tend sometimes to take a dip. It's whilst we are in that hardships after the hardships, we might come back to Allah and increase. But during the hardships itself, we tend to give ourselves a pass and we take a break. And subhanAllah, you know, there is this idea that, you know, when things are good, when things are easy, I will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I will prepare myself for the hardships. But little do we realize that a lot of times when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us in that hardship, in that trial, that's our time to shine. That's our time to show how obedient and subservient we are. That's where Allah wants to see. 
that we going to rise to the occasion and we are going to respond the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to respond. So the story that I am going to share with you today is one of the great tabi'een, one of the great students of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala. His name is Wahb ibn Munabbah rahimahullah. Wahb ibn Munabbah was not only a great scholar, but he was also someone that suffered in his life under various governments and things of that sort. And so once as a result of his interactions with the governments, he was jailed. Now a lot of times when people are in jail or when they are in a situation where they are put away, they tend to look for things to kill time. So they're going to play some games, cards, if they have cards, or they're going to sing, if they can sing, whatever it may be. So as Wahab ibn Munabba is in jail, a man comes to him and he says to him, Allah unshiduka, do you want me to share with you some poetry? Do you want me to sing for you a nasheed? That's what it sounds like. What it means is that do you want me to entertain you so that we can kill time, so that we can pass time while we are sitting here in this prison? And Wahab, ibn Ris Wahab responded and he says, Nahnu fi tarfim min adabillah. We are possibly right now living under the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, right now we are in a time of hardship. And he says, Wallahu ta'ala yaqul. And Allah says, and this is the verse from the Jews that we are discussing today. So Allah says, indeed, we seized them with punishment. But they humbled not themselves to their Lord, nor did they invoke Allah with submission to Him. Stay tuned. Insha'Allah when we return, we will continue from here. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Before the break, we spoke about how Wahab was in prison and one of his companions said to him, Shall I entertain you with some poetry? And he said to him that we are now on the brink of a punishment. And he made reference to the ayah that we are discussing this evening. So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that verily we grip them with some form of suffering. And that suffering was a warning. We gripped them with some form of a suffering, with a trial. And the word means that we seize them with some form of suffering that was a warning to them. But they did not yield to their Allah, nor did they humble themselves. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them some form of a suffering or some form of a trial as a means of bringing them back and instead of humbling themselves they became further and more distant from Allah so Wahab is saying to him you don't know and you know I don't have the time for that Allah expects something from me as I'm sitting here in this prison cell so instead Wahab said to him Wahab started to fast and subhanallah, prison was already difficult. And just like now, where you have certain times of eating, they had certain times of eating. So Wahab went three days consecutively fasting. And so the other prisoners were like, this is too much. So people said to him, what is this fasting? You know, why are you fasting right now? And he responded with something very beautiful he said ahdatha lana fa ahdathna yani ahdath lana al habs fa ahdathna ziyadat al ibadah means that allah introduced a new trial in our lives and so we introduce an extra act of worship 
And the introduction here is not in a sense of an innovation, rather Allah threw a trial, a punishment at us, and we responded the way that Allah wanted us to respond, with more good deeds and more acts of worship. And so there is really a powerful lesson here. He says, we were jailed and we were ex expected to increase in our worship. What that means is that you know the next time when you and I find ourselves in some form of hardships, do not feel sorry for yourself. Don't start to pity yourself. Don't start to give yourself a pass. People will come to you and they will tell you, you know, you don't have to worry about extra worship now. It's okay. You don't have to worry about doing this. Just take it easy. Be easy on yourself. But you need to hold yourself to a higher standard and recognize that Allah is presenting an opportunity to you. And if you pass in that opportunity, then inshallah, Allah will make that a means by which Allah enters you into Jannah, inshallah. So Wahab understood that, and I hope that through the understanding of this ayah, that we also will respond in a better way to the trials that we experience. When you experience any difficulty, make that as an opportunity to increase in your obedience to Allah, in your worship to Allah. That in itself is the means by which we will gain the nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this incident, we see how Wahab was touched by this verse. Not only touched how he interacted and how he brought this ayah into his life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to test us beyond our scope. Not to test us beyond our scope. And to give us the strength and the sincerity to respond to difficulties the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to respond. Whether it is in times of ease or hardships. Allahumma ameen. Insha'Allah. We will see you tomorrow evening where we discuss another ayah from the Holy Quran and narrate a story about how some of our pious predecessors interacted with the Quran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا لسنته جلا نوري لهدي الحق أرشدنا كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا لسنته جلا نوري كتاب الله دستوري كتاب الله دستوري